Hello, this is Dave, and you are you. But then again, you could be Dave. I guess that's a little presumptuous of me. I, I would think that maybe there are other Daves out there. If there are any Daves listening, I, I didn't mean to belittle you by saying you're not Dave, because you very likely could be Dave. And uh, if that's the case, that is a great name that you have. But if you're not Dave, then I've already rambled on uh, a little bit too long just about our names. Uh, but basically, I'm the Dave with 80s Reboot Overdrive, and, well, you're not, uh, because there's only one of me. Uh, so this is going to be a uh, solo podcast. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is just bringing you up to speed on a few things, and I also wanted to do a another 80s reboot overdrive podcast to just give you a little update on some things going on uh, in my life and uh, put you know some more stuff out there for you guys to listen to and uh, enjoy uh, but you know what's the important thing to get our show started as it normally is is that we got this little thing called a bumper so I'm going to be inserting that here So, uh, you know, this is Dave once again, and uh, back online and talking to you, my listener. Uh, Something I haven't done in a while to give you kind of a private little session of uh, the ramblings of my inner mind. Uh, So this is really just me kind of catching up with you and letting you know that, you know, I'm still out here, still doing things, um, even though you're not getting podcasts as frequently as you probably would like uh, if you are a dedicated 80s reboot fan Uh, and so you know production has slowed down a bit and I wanted to give you kind of a overview as to what's going on uh, in the world of Scott Rose and myself and uh, kind of what's next so, uh, so th- this will do that, but at the same time, I'm going to mix in a little bit of our uh, 80s topic because I think you as a listener are tuning in to 80s Repeat Overdrive just for the fact that you want to get some 80s content in there. So I think a lot of my content I'll be sharing with you today could be stuff that's not really 80s. So I want to intermingle some some stuff that you may like. Uh, and so my thought process is that I'm going to do a short series uh, where I'm going to bring up the cartoons that would have been broadcast for specific years in the 1980s, tell you what was on the schedule for Saturday morning cartoons. And what I will do is tell you which shows I would have watched out of that lineup uh, and some of those that uh, I remember play you the uh, intro theme songs for those uh, and uh, you know just discuss a little bit uh, amongst the other ramblings that are going on uh, in my world uh, so a lot of uh, 
a lot of interesting interesting things going on. I don't know if you'll think I'm, they're interesting, but they're interesting to me. And I just wanted to share, and I wanted to keep you all updated and hopefully get in a schedule of sorts of creating some content for you to listen to. Hopefully you don't mind just listening to me. Um, not that uh, Scott Rose uh, has broken up with me. Uh, well, that would sound weird. I put their names together like they're, uh, you know, blended together like uh, maybe uh, it's Rose or uh, uh, Rost. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll combine the names like they're married or something. So the uh, uh, the, the Rost, uh, you know, we'll, we'll refer to those two as Rose and Scott together. So, uh, yeah, that really doesn't make any sense at all. And, you know, you would think I'm drinking, but I'm not other than water. Um, but really, uh, yeah, what I wanted to do is start off with maybe that 80s topic that I was talking about, which is what shows would have been scheduled uh, for the year of 1980. Uh, so what I wanted to do was uh, I got up a, uh, a web page called uh, in the 80s.com and it's uh, Saturdays. So it's a Saturday morning TV schedules. And so I brought up the uh, the first year that I wanted to talk about, which is the year of 1980. And then, like I said, this series will go through, and I'll pick on the uh, each year in order, and post these uh, as I produce those and get those together. And then hopefully you'll have something out there once a week uh, with my talking about these cartoons, amongst other things, of course. Uh, so, the uh, uh, spring of 1980, uh, at 8 o'clock, the, uh, the cartoons that would have been on would have been Super Friends, Mighty, Mighty, Mighty Mouse, Heckle and Jekyll, uh, which appears to be in uh, a one-hour block, so those cartoons would have blended together, uh, Super Globetrotters, Casper and the Angels, and, and so those are the shows that were on the uh, spring of 1980. In the fall of 1980, at 8 o'clock, you would have had Super Friends and Mighty Mouse Heckle and Jekyll again. But then that would have bled into Tom and Jerry. And then uh, Godzilla Dino Mutt. Uh, so between those shows that were on, uh, at the beginning part of Saturday morning, as I was probably enjoying my either Captain Crunch or Fruity Pebbles, I would have more than likely been watching this specific cartoon. Oh, now it was going to start again. Uh, so yeah, that's Super Friends. Um, I, you know, I I, I was a uh, a fan of the t you know the cartoon uh, in many of its incarnations, uh, incantations, incarnations, whatever word that is, uh, throughout the 1980s. Uh, so you know, I had watched it through the uh, the Wonder Twin era and the uh, the Marvin era which uh, I think probably the Wonder Twins were way better than Marvin. Um, but, you know, I understand that uh, at that time, uh, the people that produced those things wanted to make sure that kids could identify with, you know, a young character or young like characters. And so that's why you had those kind of sidekicks in there, uh, whether you, you like them or not. Uh, a lot of times I didn't like those kind of characters, but at least that's the way I kind of identified the different eras of that cartoon. Um, uh, fair to say that I've always been a fan of Batman. Uh, so, you know, this version of it would have been still fun to watch. Um, and, uh, 
so you know it was just a lot of good fun a lot of good early 1980s fun for me and uh that definitely bled over through the uh the rest of the 80s as we progressed through as uh you know things got kind of a little bit more mature uh but you know the super friends were always there and i've really always been more of a uh, as a comic book fan i've been more dc than i have been marvel uh, and it, it's safe to say that Marvel, for some reason, uh, throughout the years, has done a better job with producing movies. So uh, I, I think while the late 1980s did a great job with Batman, and I know that we had a uh, great Christopher Reeve as Superman, but you know they just weren't able to keep that going. Uh, as long as they could and then it took a long time before those uh, those particular properties got better um, but somehow Marvel just can bang out awesomeness you know from Guardians of the Galaxy to Avengers to Captain America uh, so uh, I seem to enjoy those a bit more I, I like the, uh, the, the the humor elements that they put into it besides just you know the heroes kicking butt um, but that was me kind of ranting a little bit away from what I talked about, you know, uh, early morning cartoons, and that would have been Super Friends, would have been that first hour block that I listened, not listened, that I uh, watched and enjoyed. So, uh, before we talk about what had been on at 9 o'clock, uh, let's talk a little bit about what's going on uh, kind of in my life as far as realizing that I'm probably falling out of relevancy with uh, the younger people in my life. Uh, and there's two things that happened recently that just really kind of highlighted that for me. Uh, recently I went to my niece's wedding uh, and uh, she's great and uh, her new husband uh, fantastic couple um, you know we've been going to family gatherings and seeing them their their relationship mature and uh, it, it's it's happy it, it's good to see those two happy and uh, married uh, but you know going to the wedding uh, and the reception you know there were a lot of their friends you know that were 20 somethings and they had a DJ and he had this ability to really play to the crowd. And the, being the crowd was 20-somethings. You know, the there, there were older songs that were in there, from your Elvis Presley to uh, uh, Macarena and Chicken Dance and all that kind of traditional music fair for uh, weddings. But then they started playing... Towards the end of the the dance hour or the dance hours, uh, a lot of songs that I had absolutely no clue who they were or who was singing uh, or what the song was, or, and the kids never stopped dancing. And I look over at my teenager, who's 16 years old, and she is singing along or mouthing the words. And she knows every one of those songs. And I realized that there's some point in my life where I checked out. I, I checked out from paying attention and keeping up to date with that kind of thing. Uh, and I'm beginning to think it was probably somewhere in the 90s that I just didn't keep up with the the songs that were current and relevant to the youth of that decade. So I'm thinking that, you know, my repertoire or my, you know, arsenal of musical knowledge checked out around 1990-something. Uh, and, you know, that's when I have lost the ability to be able to sing, sing along with songs. Uh, so... If we're somewhere where there's a receptionist 
or there's dancing going on and you play something from the late 2000s, I think you've lost me. That's all I'm saying. I don't know if uh, there's a lot more other people that feel that way, but uh, that's when I noticed you know, that I, I've stopped kind of staying on board with that kind of thing. The, uh, the uh, other thing that kind of happened to me recently is uh, I was, uh, I'm at a position now where I'm a manager and I'm with uh, a company where I, I'm in the position where I get to talk to uh, account reps for different companies. And uh, just the other day, I had uh, two account reps for a uh, for a firm that was in my office, and uh, once again, twenty somethings. And uh, somehow, you know, we we get to the you know the chit chat part of the conversation where we're not talking about all the work stuff anymore. And uh, you know the. You know, I bring up the idea that I, I, well, not the idea, but I bring up this thing that I do this podcast thing. And they're like really interested. You know, they get like ask all these engaging questions. And eventually it gets to the point where they're like, well, you know, I'm going to listen to your show. You know, I'm, you know, we're going to listen to it in the car on the way back to the office or I'm going to listen. Oh, well, that's cool. That's great. And um, so they're, they're in my office, and what I'm trying to do is give them kind of a episode to start with. And uh, so I'm thinking, well, maybe one of the celebrity interview ones. Maybe maybe there's something there that they'll find interesting. And I'm going through, um, you know, the the interviews that I've had a good time with uh, in the past on the '80s reboot archive, and. So I, I'm like, well, have you ever watched Never Ending Story? Because I did a uh, interview with the Childlike Empress. You know, I wasn't really proud of that one, and uh, no, they had never seen the movie. Never. It sounded like they, they were unsure if they've even heard of it. I'm like, Never Ending Story? Are you? And I'm thinking in my head, Are you serious? They actually let people graduate from college without knowing Never Ending Story. You know. Their educations have been neglected. Um, and then, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe another, you know, what I consider a big name. And I'm like, all right, well, I did an interview with Larry Wilcox, you know, it showed chips. They were lost. They didn't know chips. I And I'm in my head, I'm thinking to myself, once again, I've lost, you know, connection points. I'm not, you know, on the relevance chain anymore for, you know, the teenagers to the 20-somethings now because they've got no frame of reference for all the stuff that I've been talking about on this podcast. So, if you're still listening, hopefully I'm relevant to you. (laughs) I hope anyway. At least, you know, I hope that uh, this show is doing something for you. Uh, so that's uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about. So let's let's jump into what cartoons would have been on at nine o'clock on uh, in 1980 uh, on Saturday mornings. So in the spring, we would have had Plastic Man, Bugs Bunny, Roadrunner, Fred and Barney meet the Schmoo. In the fall of 1980. You would have got the Scooby and Scrappy-Doo. Once again, Bugs Bunny, Roadrunner. And once again, Fred and Barney meet the Schmoo. And what I would have been watching at 9 o'clock would have been this show. Plastic Man will face the world's greatest collection of villains. 
Oh, do it again. I gotta watch that button. Uh, so, Plastic Man. Um, like I said, I've probably always been, uh, you know, person that was a fan of DC Comics even before I really started collecting DC Comics. Uh, for some reason, I just uh, enjoy the uh, the characters that they brought to life. Uh, so, Plastic Man, uh, back in 1980, I've been, what, nine years old? Uh, and for some reason, I just really enjoyed watching that. I, I Once again, I, I like the uh, humor elements of it, uh, along with the superhero uh, uh, connection. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I don't remember a lot about that cartoon. In fact, just, I, I just watched that intro again, and uh, there were definitely some elements there that I don't even remember, like his uh, sidekick... Uh, being a, a bit of an overweight gentleman with a Hawaiian shirt and of course there was like a, a love interest in there um, so I don't remember any of that I just remember it being kind of corny and I remember him trying hard to be funny uh, at, the same, at the same time of being a superhero um, you know, I could be way off base on this but I seem to remember him also being like an ex-convict uh, but I don't know if that ever showed up in the 1980 uh, cartoon. But I just remember that being something, uh, maybe in some sort of Batman type of scenario where they were trying to turn him into a good guy or something. I could be remembering something way off base. I don't know. Um, that's the uh, the problem with memories that have uh, had so many years in between, you know, of... Uh, you, you try to fill in gaps where you uh, uh, you think they are, and uh, you could be way off base. But I'm going to do. I'm not going to edit this out. So hopefully, if I am way off base, there's going to be somebody out there that will correct me. But otherwise, you might be listening and screaming into your radio and saying, uh, "Dave, no, that's not this person. That's this other person, and you should just stop talking now." Um, but hopefully you don't feel that way, and that's your reason for keep listening to me. So, um, what I wanted to do is quickly give you a little synopsis also about uh, what's going on with Scott Rose and I. Uh, and if you've heard some of our previous shows, uh, we've hinted at stuff uh, around starting our own network, and we may have even, uh, I think we even brought it up on an episode or two uh, and what we've been doing is starting that full force you know we've really been devoting a lot of energy into creating a new thing uh, and the website's out there now uh, and I've went out and I snagged uh, a lot of the social media names so that it's the same thing uh, really no reason to keep it a secret anymore. So if you have the opportunity, go to bonsairetroclub.com. That's a B-A-N-Z-A-I retroclub.com. And that's going to really be Scott Rose and I's new podcast home. And what we're going to be doing is covering topics from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, and probably the reason, the byproduct of the reason why you haven't really gotten that much new content from us in 80s Reboot Overdrive is because we're excited about starting that new thing. You know, we want to get that going. Uh, so when you I think when you try to decide to start a new chapter in your life, you want to go forward with that as fast as possible. And, you know, you, you put a lot of time and energy into doing that thing and less around what you were doing before. Uh, so that's the reason why uh, there's been less of this and trying to build up that. So I gave you the web address because... We actually have content that's out there now. It's not podcast blog content too much, but there's uh, some stuff to check out on the website. And I, I'd love for you to go check into it 
and you know browse around see what you think let me know your thoughts there's actually a contact page uh, that's on that that I would love for you to you know join our mailing list you know so that you're aware of when new content comes out or just you know drop a comment and let me know what you think uh, you know and, and you know that's kind of something that's you know I'm looking to get started and I'm hoping that some of you if not all of you that are interested in listening to 80 reboot overdrive would you know continue to listen to 80 reboot overdrive in whatever fashion that stays going and then maybe also pick up listening to us at bonsai retro club um so like i said though we're going to be putting effort into uh, 70s podcasts 80s podcast and 90s podcast each of those were naming 70 something 80 something and 90 something so uh a lot of fun you know ideals around you know different topics to get started uh and so we're looking to do that you know here in the near future um so the, the 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 right now the whole concept is getting you know the last things buttoned up the last things ready for you the listener to to have out there and uh you know consume that uh, but it's never easy as just being able to record something and drop it out you know into the world wide web there's a lot of setup stuff yeah you know, there's a lot of things that people don't think about you know the the, like I said at the the top of this whole thing is snagging the social media stuff you know building the web page uh, finding a host for podcast content you can't just throw that out there somewhere you want to do it smart you know and you know there's things you know there, there's actually strategies around like when to drop it on iTunes so you know we could be a ways off before you even see you know our first network stuff on iTunes uh, believe it or not there's actually strategy that it's best to wait until you're uh, three or four episodes in before you even drop it on iTunes which um, I found to be interesting and that increases your chances of the people that choose the uh, new and no- new and noteworthy section to you know see your stuff and kind of enjoy it and you know if they enjoy it then it might get into the new and noteworthy section which is what you what you really want as a podcaster um, to be in there so that's kind of you know some background as to what's going on with that Um, you know and right now we're at the point of the just the schedule of things and I'll, I'll go into that a little bit in a minute but I wanted to cover our next hour block of uh, Saturday morning cartoons so I left off at 9 o'clock in 1980 and actually all of those shows that I mentioned went from 9 to 10.30 wow so we're at the 10.30 block Uh, 10.30 in the spring of 1980 you would have had Scooby and Scrappy Doo Popeye and then uh, Daffy Duck and uh, Daffy Duck would have uh, bled over to get off your block at 11 o'clock and that was that's what was happening on spring when we jump over to the fall of 1980 we would have gotten um, you know what I already said Thunder Thunder was fall sorry and then you would have went to candle pin bowling what is that I don't know uh, and uh, Popeye, uh, Daffy Duck, and Batman and the Super Seven. So out of all of those, um, I think you're not going to like me for this one. But uh, this is what I would have been watching. Thank you. 
All right, so Scooby and Scrappy Doo, and um, you know the uh, say what you want, um, and I agree with you. Did not like Scrappy, not at all. Um, Scrappy was really quite annoying, uh, and I think you know I I did not have a uh, a love for those kind of characters that they tried to introduce into those cartoons. Um, you know, I would say the same thing about Snarf from Thundercats, uh, Orko from He-Man, uh, and Scrappy. I just, uh, not, uh, they annoyed me. But, you know, at this point it would have been 1030. You know, I would have already gotten a good two and a half hours of cartoons in at this point. And, you know, I probably would have had Scooby on as background you know, towards activities that I would have probably getting started with with the day. So, in this case, you know, um, uh, Scooby, always been a fan, and I would have enjoyed continuing to watch Scooby, you know. I would like his exchanges with Shaggy and the mystery van, um, you know, and that uh, lovely Velma. Uh, and... So, I would have definitely enjoyed having that on, but I think that uh, not paying as close as much attention to it because Scrappy would have been annoying me a lot. Uh, so that brings us through to 1130, which would be our next block that we talk about, which is near the end of the, uh, the cartoon uh, of the Saturday morning cartoons uh, for the year of 1980. So, uh, let's see, the last thing probably want to just bring about is, uh, you know, further thought process on Bonsai Retro Club. Uh, and, you know, that's a scheduling thing at this point. You know, there's... What happened was I went on... I do this thing like every so often with 80s Reboot Overdrive is where I give myself a break and I'm to the point where I like I take a month off and I collect my thoughts and I not because it's work or a chore to create a podcast but just for the fact that it's one of those things where I have to remind myself that it's something that I don't have to do, but I want to do. Uh, and podcasting has always been has been that since I've started doing it, you know. And what I do is, you know, I get myself into that frame of mind where I've got to get something out there every week, and it becomes the, you know, I don't have content. It's late in the week. I need to have content so I can edit over the weekend so I can get it posted the following week and then, you know, that whole cycle. So, um, you know, that gets into this thing where it's like, you know, get it done, get it done, get it done, and then it becomes a gotta do versus a wanna do. So I had kind of a, 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 a self-assessment period, you know, that I was doing annually where I just made sure that I knew the priorities were right in my head, you know, where I gave myself a break and allowed myself the ability to, you know, figure that out for myself to make sure that, you know, it's, you know, I'm keeping what's important, important in my life. Uh, So, fell in where I was going on a family vacation around that same month period that I was going to do that thing you know my self-evaluation and I hand the reins over to Scott and Rose and you know I created some content so that they would not feel obligated to do it themselves every week and ever since that period and before we even took that little break of sorts we already had the uh, the mental thought process of doing this other network thing. And ever since then, we really haven't gotten back into the 
uh, the, the, the zone with creating like consistent content for you. So back when I was on vacation, you guys were getting back to back new podcast content and that was because it was you know the design of mine to give you that kind of content and then we just kind of came back from that break and we had our rah-rah meeting between the three of us and we were like okay we're going to do this thing and we started to put our mental energy and uh, you know, in some case, financial energy into creating this other thing. And then, you know, here we are months later, and you guys are, you know, kind of dropping off listening to us because we haven't given you a lot of new content. Uh, so we, we haven't been taking care of you. Uh, and if you're still listening, we appreciate you. Um, so, but if we did lose you, uh, you're not hearing this now. And uh, I'm sorry about that. But uh, the reason why is because we wanted to do our, you know, start our own thing. And uh, we're excited about it. We want to do it. We know it's cool. Um, we hope you feel the same because ultimately, you know, we'll, we'll need that kind of validation. We'll need you to go check out our thing, you know, which would be over at uh, bonsairetroclub.com, like I said before. Uh, so um, that's kind of the reason why you haven't had stuff recently from us. Uh, so it's not, you know, any one particular thing. It was just kind of a, a series of events. Uh, and I think, you know, I can go into some reasoning behind starting our own thing when I jump into like uh, the year 1981 if I uh, if I remember to do that for you um, but uh, right now let's just let's let's wrap up the uh, the discussion with the uh, Saturday morning cartoons uh, so we're, we're at 1130 now uh, so in spring of 1980 you would have gotten uh, kids world fat Albert and the bane of every kid's existence, the news. Uh, fall of 1980, uh, like I mentioned before, you would have had candle pin bowling, which uh, I still don't know what that is, uh, and drag pack. And Batman the Super 7 actually started at 11, so that would have bled through 11 to 12 uh, for the uh, Saturday morning cartoons. So, um, being at 11.30... I would have started watching this program. Of the monsters of the past comes a new generation dedicated to reversing the evil image of their forefathers. Under the leadership of none other than Count Dracula, known as Big D, three teenagers formed the do good group. And uh, that was a drag pack. I um, I remember enjoying it. I remember watching it. I uh, you know th that uh, the you know classic monsters were uh, cool back then. Um, I never really got into a lot of the uh, horror movies when you get into the late '80s. In fact, there's uh, a lot of those horror movies that I haven't even seen until recently. Uh, you know that uh, you know I've talked about various different versions of this uh, uh, podcast uh, so I'm late in the game on some of those um, so but I have started to digest some of those and uh, enjoy them for what they were but I think that I would have liked them a lot better in their original 
when they originally came out because that was kind of a sign of the times. Uh, and something that I've talked about, I'm sure, before was like I, I hadn't even seen They Live uh, for the first time uh, until maybe a year ago or two years ago at this point. Uh, so I had gone my, uh, you know, my whole 80s education without seeing the great Rowdy Roddy Piper and, uh, you know, uh, that kind of 80s horror flick. Um, and, you know, I, I think it would have been more relevant had I seen it at the time uh, because it was definitely a commentary for the social... Uh, impact of the world of the 80s uh, you know be it consume um, you know as the message or anti-consumatory uh, but that's me going way off topic uh, the track pack was kind of a uh, my appreciation for those monsters uh, classic monsters and uh, I always thought you know as a fun little take on you know taking those classic monsters and having them want to be superheroes or do-gooders. So I think there's a lot of the cartoons that you see from the 1980s that, or, or the year 1980 that had a lot of superhero theme that I would have enjoyed and watched. Uh, so, um, so that's my list. That's what uh, the Saturday morning schedule would have looked like uh, for little Dave uh, you know, getting up when he was, would have been nine years old, wow, uh, you know, to listen, uh, not listen, but watch those cartoons and, you know, like I said, enjoying the the various sugar-coated cereals as you do uh, before you get started in your uh, kid activities, uh, which would have been in a small southern town in florida uh, which there wouldn't have been a lot to do anyway so i wouldn't be surprised if i was uh, a consumer of much more tv throughout the day but i know that uh, somewhere in that mix of things to do would have been sort of involved maybe uh, crazy magazines star wars action figures and uh, um, most likely um, uh, the Atari, whenever that came out, uh, had the Atari 2600, so, you know, spend many hours trying to master uh, Pitfall. Uh, you know, story for another time, but I still have that patch for the uh, uh, the Pitfall uh, Activision patch that I did send away, you know, for the mothership. I still have got that here in my archives in the basement. Uh, so that's really kind of my, my show for today. Uh, the podcast. I'm, I'm hoping that I didn't bore you too much with being the only voice that you're hearing on this one. Uh, so once again, I am Dave, and um, normally, um, actually, I want to talk to you about this real quick. Normally, when I'm ending uh, Age Reboot Overdrive, I'm uh, I'm I'm asking you to go check out our Twitter and Tumblr and Facebook, and I'm at a crossroads right now because I'm more interested in building this this other network up than you know continuing to build up the uh, uh, the social media content for 80s reboot uh, so I mean both of those are out there I'm still doing stuff on both but I seem to be at a mental space now where I kind of want you to go check out bonsai retro club more than 80s reboot uh, social media accounts um, so I don't know if that's really a, a fair headspace to be in spe especially since I'm on the 80s reboot overdrive right now um, but like I said you know if you go to the, the new website uh, bonsai retro club.com there's links to all of the new social media I, I would love for you to go out there and follow uh, you know twitter tumblr uh, Facebook, um, all the links are on the website. Uh, once again, like I said, drop an email through there. Uh, I'll get it and I'll be able to know you're listening and you're interested in uh, our new stuff. Um, 
but at the same time we still have got 80s reboot to attend to and that's what this is about uh, so I seem to do a lot better job with keeping up with Twitter so uh, on Twitter that's at 80s reboot um, I would send you to Tumblr and Facebook but I just don't feel that I've done a good job with keeping that up to date and it's not fair to you to go looking out there for something new when I'm not posting so uh, if you want to check all that stuff out just look up 80s reboot you'll find it um, and then you know if when I get back to updating those things uh, you'll have stuff to look at but uh, like I said putting a lot of energy into the other thing so uh, that's where I'm uh, kind of my headspace is at uh, and so I, I hope you understand that uh, and the other thing that I wanted to end with was the uh, normally as I'm ending 80s reboot overdrive I always say uh, you know I appreciate you reliving the 80s with us and I've been trying to come up with a new phrase to end the show for Bonsai Retro Club uh, and I wanted something that would be a thing that kind of was relevant to you know the three decades 70s 80s and 90s and I'm having tr trouble coming up with that thing uh, but all I can come up with right now is actually stealing just a phrase from an 80s movie uh, which was uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure uh, it's you know just advice that I think everybody should follow is uh, be excellent to each other so until you hear otherwise that will be kind of my close up for that network uh, when I'm signing off is uh, be excellent to each other um, which I think is just great advice for everybody you know because I think there's a lot of people that are mean and do malicious stuff and they're just a waste of energy uh, to, to be that way uh, so uh, being we're on 80s Reboot Overdrive we're going to say thank you for reliving the 80s with us and uh, you know have a good uh, well you know whatever and uh, here's our closeout bumper uh, in case you forgot what that sounded like Follow us on Facebook on the 80s Reboot group page. We're also on Twitter and Tumblr at 80s Reboot. We invite you to check out all the wonderful podcasts and blogs available at SouthgateMediaGroup.com. And thank you for reliving the 80s.